ready for takeoff. Yeah, so I'll give a quick introduction to our opening keynote. Uh, our first keynote speaker is probably familiar to most of you in the Ruby community. Mats is the creator of Ruby and a professional programmer who worked on the Japanese open, at, for the Japanese open source company netlab.jp. Mats is also known as one of the open source evangelists in Japan. He's released several open source projects, including Cmail, the Emacs-based male user agent client, written entirely in Emacs Lisp. Ruby is his first piece of software uh, known outside of Japan. And Mats is unfortunately unable to join us in person this year, but he has recorded his keynote presentation for everyone to enjoy. Uh, hello, uh, this is Mats, the, the creator of the Ruby language and uh, the keynote speaker of this conference. Uh, last week, unfortunately, I got COVID infected. So the, yeah, last week I suffered a lot and a high fever and, and, and coughs, coughs and uh, the pain in the throat and uh, yeah, that, that, that was tough. And I think I got recovered, yeah, partially, but uh, I'm, I'm getting well. Yeah, thank you. And uh, but uh, I'm still, you know, not the full, fully, fully recovered. So that you may have some kind of the, you know, yeah, probably I'm not get well enough to uh, have a full, full length of the keynote. Usually, uh, the RubyConf keynotes are longs. 45 to 60 minutes, but uh, probably this this keynote will uh, will be finished the uh, shorter <laughs> this year. The keynote will be shorter, yeah, maybe. But, uh, this year I'm going to going to talk a little bit about the performance and then uh, and then. Uh, Sometimes, and uh, some someone all often say, uh, if if Ruby is faster, we use Ruby or something something like that. You know, uh, before Rails, in you know Rails was released in uh, two thousand four, so the the Ruby was first released in the public in uh, 95 so that nearly 10 years so the ruby is kind of unpopular so that there are some very enthusiastic uh, ruby users and then we had the ruby conference in the states but uh, still ruby was not that popular the during these times so the ruby people often claim the ruby is slow so that uh, people sometimes complain about the, the performance of the language. And if Ruby is faster, we use Ruby or something like that. The, uh, I heard that kind of claim uh, again and again and many, many times. But uh, we have learned the lesson. Uh, we don't believe them because uh, even if we do improve the performance. They don't choose Ruby. So that in the past, we have improved the performance of the Ruby language a lot. For example, in uh, Ruby 1, age of Ruby 1.8, we have improved the call frames so that uh, the method call, performance of the method call the, is significantly made faster. Or, Ruby 1.9, we have introduced a new virtual machine uh, code named YAV, yet another Ruby virtual machine. And uh, the performance gained on a, at least several times, even for the, the best benchmark, uh, it, it was 50 times faster than the previous versions. 
Uh, we have introduced the generational garbage collector and incremental garbage collector to reduce the, you know, the, the performance of the memory management. Or the memory allocation uh, scheme itself has been improved a lot. So that we have many, many, many uh, improvement for the performance. So that uh, now Ruby is compared to the past, the Ruby is many, many folds faster. But uh, no one chose Ruby for performance. Yeah, mostly because they are always faster language. You know, if the performance is the first priority, maybe they pick some you know, C, C++, and, uh, or Go, Rust, or whatever. So that there's, oh, there are always faster languages, especially in the natively compiled uh, programming languages. But uh, uh, people often confuse the priority. So that uh, a friend of mine uh, got, when? Uh, maybe 15 years ago, the friend of mine changed the job to the, uh, the, the web company. So that their boss, had a set the priority, uh, the performance as the fir their first priority. So they chose C to implement the, the web application. But uh, this was this was a serious mistake because the, they have a lot of issues about uh, no, no, implementing the implementing everything from scratch and. Uh, the performance was wonderful, but uh, they suffered uh, suffered bugs a lot. But uh, uh, they, in as a result, they failed to ship the final product. So that that is that is the wrong priority. So that uh, the performance for most of the cases, the performance is not the first priority. Uh, and uh, the Ruby is always fast enough for most of the cases, especially for the web applications. Uh, for example, you know, the many web applications, many web services are implemented in Ruby. For example, Shopify is implemented in Ruby and the GitHub is implemented in Ruby and there's so many other uh, web services are implemented in Ruby. And then, uh, they are, they are doing okay. You know, the, they, they are not, probably they are not fully satisfied, uh, satisfied with the Ruby performance, 100%, but uh, uh, Ruby is fast enough to serve them. So, uh, performance does not matter to process someone. The, so there are many more factors to choose the language. We are not going to improve performance for them, you know, uh, total, total strangers, but uh, we are going to improve performance for you. Yeah, you in the Ruby community and uh, you at attending the Ruby conference. We are improving uh, Ruby in many, many uh, aspects, especially for the Ruby community, not for the strangers. For example, uh, think about it. When the service, some web, especially service, uh, web, web services uh, needs uh, 600 hosts to serve. Uh, if Ruby becomes 10% faster, the, if they are using the T, T3 X large uh, node in the, the AWS, so that it will save you more than 80 kilo uh, USD per year. That, that is huge. So that for that sense, performance does matter. Performance does matter to make you happy so that uh, total reason of 
you know, performance improvement, the language improvement, the, the better tools, the, is to make you happy. The joy is the greatest value of Ruby. And the community is the greatest wealth of Ruby. But, uh, some 30, nearly 30 years ago, I started Ruby alone, but uh, so many people gathered together to work with the language and to improve the language that we have a lot of uh, contribution from the community. That's why we are now. That's why we are now. But, uh, yeah, welcome to the Ruby community. The, the community who helped each other a lot, who contribute to the Ruby uh, to improve the language and the implementation for the sake of your joy. So that's the Ruby community. I'm very proud of, the, of being the leader of this generous and uh, friendly and uh, helping each other, contributing each other, uh, community. So that, that is the greatest wealth of Ruby language. So that we have contributed to uh, increase world joy. And uh, that's, that's the reason we are working on Ruby. That we are happy to working on Ruby to improve the uh, improve the language, the, the increase the joy, and uh, to make the world a better place. So that, okay, let me introduce what's new in Ruby 3.2 that is soon to be released in this Christmas. <coughs> yeah, first of all, the Ruby is available on the WASM, so the WebAssembly. So the, the whole Ruby, compile, uh, Ruby virtual machine can be compiled into the the WebAssembly, so that the, you can run the full, full Ruby, uh, any restriction uh, in in the browser. So that uh, that is that is quite wonderful. So the when I got this proposal from the community, I I just thought that it was it could be a yet another platform of the that that's Ruby supports. Uh, for example, Ruby is run in Linux and uh, FreeBSD and Windows, Mac OS, and uh, and and uh, AIX from uh, IBM and uh, many platforms. Now we, I thought we got yet another platforms, but uh, uh, the Wasm is more than that because. The, we can run full Ruby in in browser so that uh, maybe we can replace the you know replace the JavaScript by totally Ruby, not the you know by not by emulation, not by the you know the hiding something. You know, fully uh, implemented Ruby in the browser. That is kind of, you know, game, game changing. Yeah, Ruby on Wasm. Uh, the Endo-san, which is, who is in charge of the, you know, many things like a pro, um, type prof and, uh, you know, the many games and the, uh, the opta carrots and then and, uh, he also played with the Ruby on Wasm and then uh, he made some kind of the, you know, uh, interactive Ruby environment in browser. So that all Ruby program will be run on the browser so that you don't have to worry about the, you know, the sandboxing and the, you know, the, uh, the protecting execution in the, in the server side or something like that. Okay, next one, YJIT. Uh, Ruby 3.1 introduced the YJIT JIT compiler and uh, uh, sponsored by the uh, Shopify. And uh, that was great. That was great. And then uh, YJIT improved the performance of the Ruby uh, Ruby on Rails application by, you know, the 5 to 15%. Uh, that, that was wonderful. And uh, this year, this year, uh, the YJIT is re totally rewritten in Rust. 
uh, the historically all the Ruby uh, the virtual canonical Ruby virtual machine is implemented in C. Uh, mostly because I was I I have been a C programmer for a long, long time, almost for my, my whole life. And then, but uh, implementing the you know the compiler style and uh, the, the, the these things in C is could be quite complicated. So the the teams in the Shopify that picks another mo better or modern programming language like in Rust, and then they yeah they are powerful. They uh, they rewritten whole YJ uh, the Z compiler in Rust in some so in several months. Yeah, that was, that was wonderful. And then they introduce the the quality of the YJ has been uh, improved a lot. And then the re rewriting a YJ has some several reasons. Is one of them is supporting another other uh, the architectures other architectures. Uh, for example, the importance of the the ARM64 in the in the computing scene is getting bigger and bigger. For example, the you know our smartphones are running on the ARM64 and then the newer devices from from Apple are powered by the ARM64 architecture so that uh, that we need need to support the ARM64 but uh, uh, the old implementation of the YJ is too complicated to support uh, to add the new the CPU architecture so the, they since they rewritten the YJ compiler and then uh, uh, in Rust and uh, it's much more straightforward and easy to maintenance so that we add uh, some kind of the, the internal intermediate representation for the Z compiler so that, that leads to the support of the ARM64. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so right now we are supporting the ARM64 and the, uh, the AMD64 and um, the Intel architecture and the ARM architecture, and then probably in the future we may add some other CPUs like a, you know, the what Risk Five or something like that. Then uh, we have finally set class built in, so that you don't have to uh, declare the require. Uh, re require set or something like that. Oops, some some noise. I'm sorry. Uh, so, so you don't have to worry about set built in. Then uh, we have introduced the data object. Uh, the data of the object is kind of like an immutable struct, and uh, it is the probably in the future the the you know the data st the programming style will, will be changed a little bit using these data objects. You know, uh, in addition, data objects is also the target of the pattern matching, so the uh, just just like hashes and struct, the uh, you you can utilize these data objects in in the future. Yeah, I hope more immutable style of the programming will be popular in Ruby community. Uh, we have added the syntax suggest, uh, formerly known as a dead end gem. So that uh, you get, you will get a better error message if you know if you miss the indentation or maybe you drop the end in the somewhere in in your program. 
uh, error highlight has been added to the, the standard gem so that uh, the your error message will be uh, highlighted and the, the so that you will get the better, more readable uh, error messages from from the from Ruby programs. <coughs> uh, we have improved the AST and the abstract syntax suite as, as well, because so that uh, you know in in the future, uh, right on the now in the future. So the uh, the tools it plays the the significant role in the the to to improve the productivity. For so, uh, yeah, imagine that uh, you write the pro uh, the software in say VS Code or something like that. So that uh, you will get the code completion and the error detection, and then you know the as as you type the that is that is much much better than say that is much much better than you know the the old the plain editor things so that now the tools can help you to be uh more productive so that the in 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 the back end so that to support these kind of the you know, the productivity tools, the we uh, pass programs uh, again and again, and then to to imp implement those kind of the parsing parsing so that we may need to implement the uh, you know many many parses because of the. You know the, the requirement for the parser for the tools and the requirement for the parser for the the compiler is a little bit different, especially the error tolerance. That in during the development, so the editors see the the programs not fully syntax syntactically correct. You know. It, it's under development. So the, maybe the, the latter half is not implemented or the, maybe the maybe the code is under under development. So the, uh, for those parses for the tools should be error tolerant. That means that you know you have to uh, the half baked software. You have to the the parser have to accept the half baked, uh, half baked programs. The, the on the other hand, the parser for the 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 programs are uh, the compiler only need to accept the correct, uh, correct software. Otherwise, you have to report the error. Okay, this is syntax error. Done. Okay. That requirement is different, but uh, this times the our AST parser can be error tolerant, so that the you can the parse the half baked Ruby programs, and and then goes as as much as you go, and then the guessing guessing the the correct part, so that those error tolerant AST is quite useful for developing tools. Uh, this is this one is also from the ASD. So that, uh, now ASD holds the, the, the tokens from the program so that you can you can regenerate uh, the original program from the uh, the talk ASD information. In that in that case you are very easy to uh, to understand the, the original programs, including the comments and the, the spaces and the which usually drops off from the ASD. So that uh, we are going to add these things and uh, among others, so that to the Ruby 3.2, so that you will enjoy the better Ruby uh, you will enjoy the Ruby bet 
better Ruby uh, in the future. So the, the whole purpose of our development is to make you happy and make us happy. And we will keep moving forward. We will keep moving forward to improve the Ruby to be the, the best language, at least for us, for, for us who love the language and uh, who, us who get the, the benefit from the language and, uh, and uh, for us who, you know, earn money using Ruby. And, uh, and uh, I, we try to make all of us happy, happier in any sense. And uh, we have always tried to uh, improve the Ruby and uh, Ruby became much, much better than the past. And uh, I hope Ruby will be better in the future as well to create better world and uh, hopefully we can make better world together as a community. Okay. Uh, this is much, much, much shorter than I expected, but uh, I'm, I'm run, run out of power. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you for coming to the conference and uh, thank you for enjoying the, uh, that, uh, thank you for being the, being the part of the community. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the conference and uh, you get some inspiration from the, you know, the community and uh, the, the congregation of the Ruby users. Uh, thank you. Uh, this talk and uh, all of my activity are sponsored by Salesforce.com and the uh, NSA company in Japan and uh, uh, GitHub sponsors uh, for, that sponsors my, my activities and uh, especially uh, the, all of our uh, activities are sponsored by Ruby community. Uh, thank you. Uh, I hope I'll be better <laughs> in, in, in next week and uh, maybe I can uh, respond to you in the the Twitter DMs and then Twitter messages so that if you feel anything during the conference, just mention me in and to that Twitter or Facebook or wherever. And then I, I will try to reply you directly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Bye.